Hello and welcome back, fellow snoozers. Hey, this is Murray Tesla of the Lower Manhattan Snoozological Society. Back in the 90s, I uh, did a dime upstate for a misunderstanding. While I was inside, I developed an interest in snoozology. You got a problem with that? Anyways, hey, I pursued this hobby ever since I got out. I even got my parole officer into it. Today we're going to have an epic battle between the moray eel, of which there are 200 species, so we'll have to narrow it down. And the electric eel, which really isn't an eel and lives in fresh water, so uh, certain arrangements will have to be made. That's okay though, I know a guy. If you know what's good for you, you'll hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Otherwise you might have to talk to some fishes on your own if you know what I mean. Let's go! What are you, Stuguts? The Moray Eel there are over 200 species of moray eel. The largest and probably most common is the giant moray eel, so we'll focus on that particular eel for this epic battle. Giant morays are widespread throughout the Indo-Pacific region and commonly found in lagoons and the outer slopes of coral reefs. They are large nocturnal carnivores that can grow to 10 feet long and weigh as much as 66 pounds. Moray eels produce a mucus that covers their scaleless skin that helps protect them from abrasions and can actually make the structure of their hiding places more stable by bonding with sand. In some species of moray, this mucus is toxic. Their flesh can be toxic as well. Being apex predators, they ingest toxins present in smaller fish, and over time, this ciguatera toxin builds up to dangerous levels and can be quite detrimental to humans that consume them. Symptoms of ciguatera toxin poisoning including muscle cramps, diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness, and hallucinations. Giant moray eels are known to engage in cooperative hunting with coral groupers. They even have a way of communicating with a head nod to indicate that they are about to hunt. The grouper will hunt above the reef and what he doesn't catch will be chased down into the crevices of the reef for the hunting eel. The eel hunts in the reef and what he doesn't catch is flushed out of the reef for the grouper to snatch up. Hey, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, you know what I mean? Moray eels have sharp teeth and large jaws with a very powerful bite. But the nightmare doesn't stop there. They have a second set of jaws called pharyngeal jaws, teeth included that reside back in their throat until it's needed. When the moray eel captures its prey, it first grabs its victim with a normal set of teeth and its oral jaw, then it shoots the secondary pharyngeal jaws forward to grasp the prey and pull it down its throat. If you're visualizing the creature from the movie Alien, you're not far wrong. Moray eels tend to stay in narrow crevices or beneath overhangs during the day which can make them dangerous to divers who may reach into tight areas unaware that an eel is in there. They are ambush hunters who will opportunistically take any prey that happens by their daytime resting spot. At night, they will leave their shelter under cover of darkness to actively hunt the reef, still relying on stealth and lightning quick lunges to take prey by surprise. I used to know a guy we called Vinny the Eel. You'd never see him coming. The Electric Eel Electric eels are widely distributed throughout the Orinoco and Amazon River basins. They prefer slow-moving, quiet waters of oxbow lakes, streams, pools, and flooded forests. Despite their name, they aren't really eels but are a species of knife fish more closely related to carp and catfish. These charged-up predators can reach some rather hefty proportions, growing to 8 feet in length and weighing nearly 50 pounds. But the most impressive thing about them is that they can generate up to 800 volts of electricity that they use for self-defense and to stun or kill prey. Three specialized electric organs, the main electrical organ, the hunter's organ, and the sac's organ, make up about 80% of the fish's body. Its remaining vital organs are tightly packed within the anterior or front part of its body. The electric organs create strong and weak electric charges, which are utilized for defense, hunting, communication, and navigation. Stronger electric charges can be energetically exhausting for this fish. Its strongest electric pulses are produced by the main electrical organ, as well as two-thirds of the hunter's organ. The remainder of the hunter's organ and the sac's organ produce the weaker electrical discharges. When electric eels generate this electrical charge, it is dispersed through the water, and a predator hunting them from the riverbank may not feel much of a charge. However, to combat this diluted effect, electric eels will leap out of the water and lay their bodies against a predator to deliver the full force of their electric shock. They can emit low and high voltage electricity. The low voltage electric charge is used to locate prey while the high voltage charge stuns or kills the prey. One time we had this guy who needed help uh, remembering the combination of a safe. We got out a car battery and some jumper cables and he remembered real quick. Electric eels are obligate air breathers, which means that they must come to the surface approximately every 10 minutes to inhale air. They get about 80% of their oxygen this way. Adult electric eels are generalist carnivores, 
eating fish, crustaceans, insects, and small vertebrates, such as amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. Juveniles feed primarily on invertebrates, and newly hatched electric eels will eat remaining unhatched eggs. The Fight The moray eel has a certain size advantage, but can his bulk withstand the electric eel's charge? On the Lower East Side of Manhattan, there's a clandestine fish fighting ring in the vacant industrial space above a Chinese restaurant. Fortunes are won and lost on the wagers for these predatory fish fights, and tonight is no exception. Tonight, the reigning champion, Moray Eel, is fighting a brand new opponent, the Electric Eel. Bets are placed and money flies about the room, changing hands. The two competitors are lowered into the water tank. They're warily circling one another when, without warning, the Moray Eel lunges at the Electric Eel. But before he can even make contact, though, the Electric Eel discharges enough electricity to stun and paralyze the Moray. He then slides a sinuous body alongside the moray, making contact from head to tail, and discharges all 800-plus volts of electricity at once! The moray eel's body twitches as his heart ceases and dies. We have a winner! The high-voltage sultan of South America, the Electric Eel! The moray eel is an oppressive predator, and creepy to boot, with its second set of alien-like jaws, but come on, electricity! Let us know what you thought of this battle in the comment section below. Charge up that like button and subscribe to this channel, or we'll make you an offer that you can't refuse. This has been Murray Tesla. Ciao. Until next time, Stoogers.